Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to go over everything you need to know about two valve manifold gauge sets. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. If you find this video interesting or helpful please drop a like, comment and subscribe and let's get straight into it. I have a brand new manifold gauge set. Let's begin by putting this together and going over our components. Our manifold itself is the body of the valve and it is made out of brass. And we have two pressure gauges. Our high side is typically represented by the red color. So this is our high pressure gauge. The low side is typically represented by the blue color. And this is our low pressure gauge. The low pressure gauge is also known as a compound gauge. Let's take a closer look at our two gauges and get a better understanding of what is actually going on here. So let's start with our high pressure gauge. As you can see, we have a reading from zero to 800. And if you look closely, it says 800 PSI. What we are reading here is PSIG, and this is pounds per square inch gauge. At sea level, we have 14.7 pounds of pressure against us. And this is also known as PSIA, which is pounds per square inch, absolute. So 14.7 pounds of square inch absolute is also correlated to zero pounds PSIG, and that is what we are reading here. Our high side pressure gauge is just a typical pressure gauge you would find in the field. If we take a look at our low side pressure gauge, this is also known as a compound gauge, and that is because it has unique features. The reason it is a compound gauge is because if we take a closer look, we can read from 0 to 350 accurately. We also have a measurement up to 500, but it is really unclear of your readings from here. But the reason that it is a compound gauge is because it reads above atmospheric pressure, and in the green, we are actually reading below atmospheric pressure. If we take a closer look at our gauge, we can see above it says IN HG VAC. HG represents mercury, and what we are reading here is inches in mercury vacuum from a scale from 0 to 30 inches. On the outside, we are reading pressure, and if we take a closer look here, we can see in the green we are reading R22. In the pink, we are reading R410A. In the orange, we are reading R404A. And what this is, is actually a temperature chart. So secretly, you have a pressure temperature chart within your gauge. With that being said, we can match up our refrigerant pressure with its corresponding saturation temperature according to the refrigerant that we are using. Sometimes you will notice that our needle is not pointing to zero. And what you can do is actually take this little cover off right here. From here, we can use a control screwdriver, which is a flathead, and calibrate our gauge back to zero right here. Typically, a set will come with a hook where you can hang your manifold set and comfortably view your pressures. Here we have two valves. Here is our low pressure valve, and here is our high pressure valve. This type of setup comes with three hoses, a blue hose, a yellow hose, and a red hose. Our blue hose represents low pressure and gets attached to this side of our manifold. Our yellow hose represents our testing and charging hose, which is also known as our center hose and gets attached to this part of our manifold in the center. Our red hose represents high pressure and it will get attached to the high side of our manifold right here. If we take a close look at our manifold, we're going to notice that one side is actually a dummy. It's actually blocked off and it's only used to actually hang your hose. It's these sides that actually do all the work. If we take a close look at our hoses, one end is going to have a depressor inside, also a hook. On the opposite end of our hoses, we're going to notice there is no depressor. The correct way to connect these hoses is that the side with our depressor gets connected to our manifold where we have our dummy port. It's really just to use this as a organization method because this side of the hose is the one we use to read pressures and to perform all our tasks. 
the opposite side of our hoses with no depressors get connected to the side of our manifold that are open. So here's what our manifold looks like. The way that we would connect this is that our blue hose represents our low pressure gauge. We would connect this to our low side of the system. Once again, keep in mind we're going to want to use the side that has a depressor. Next we have our center hose which is typically yellow and we would connect that to a refrigerant cylinder, a vacuum pump or recovery machine. Our red hose represents high pressure so this hose will be get connected to the high side of our system. Here's our manifold gauge set and it's a misconception that this valve has anything to do with reading pressure on this gauge. So once you connect your low side hose to the low side of your system you're automatically going to read low pressure. Once we connect our high pressure hose to the high side of our system, we are automatically going to read high pressure on our high pressure gauge. Reading low side pressure has nothing to do with using our low pressure valve, and reading high side pressure has nothing to do with using our high pressure valve. In this diagram, we can have a look at the inside of our manifold and see what's actually going on here. So once we connect our blue hose to the system, as you can see, we're open here and we can read a low side pressure. Once we connect our high side hose, we are open right here and we can read our high side pressure. What's important to note here is how this valve can control this needle. These points are what separate each side of this manifold. So over here, our valve is closed and there is no passage from our low side to our center hose. This valve is closed and there is no passage from our high side to our center hose. So what we can do is open our low side valve and by doing that, we actually create a passage from either the low side hose to the center or from the center to the low side hose. And what I mean by that is that depending on which side of pressure is higher, it's going to determine the flow of direction. So if you have this connected to a refrigerant cylinder, which has pressure inside, compared to a system that has just been in a vacuum, if you open this valve, refrigerant is going to flow from the hose, the center hose, into our low side hose, eventually into our system. In another sense, if we have our center hose connected to a refrigerant recovery tank, which has been in a vacuum and has no pressure, compared to our low side gauge, which is connected to a system which still has refrigerant inside there, so there's pressure. Now, our refrigerant will travel in the opposite direction. So when we open up this valve, since there is greater pressure in the system, now the refrigerant is gonna travel from the low hose, the low side, into our yellow hose. So by adjusting this valve, we are adjusting this needle back and forth, opening or closing the passageway from our low side to our middle hose or our high side to the middle hose. That was our overview for our typical two valve manifold gauge set. It's important to note that there are also four valve manifold gauge sets available on the market. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.